Talking to stones in Bulgaria. There are hundreds of megalithic sites across Bulgaria. And nobody knows when they were built, who built them and why. Our objective in this video is to answer the first of these fundamental questions. When were the Bulgarian pyramids built? We will answer the other two fundamental questions, who built them and why, in separate videos. To answer when they were built, we will listen to what the stones are telling us by their location, position, shape and composition. There is a message in the stones if we are ready to listen. To date the pyramids, we will look at all the civilizations that have inhabited the lands of Bulgaria to eliminate those who could not have built them. And we will compare the Bulgarian pyramids to other megalithic sites across the globe to find connections. This journey into humanity's very ancient past promises to reveal a forgotten chapter of our origins. It is based on the documentaries that we have produced for each megalithic site in Bulgaria and the information available on the Bulgaria Pyramid website. The megalithic sites of Bulgaria form a network of connected nodes. Each one is like the part of an engine, an instrument in a great orchestra. Some are bigger and some are smaller, but all the instruments share in the melody for us to hear the message. The sites are lined up in latitudinal bands across the Bulgarian mountains. At a smaller scale, we see patterns that remind us of constellations such as Orion and the Winter Triangle and star systems like Sirius. The Bulgarian pyramids are a map of the heavens above. They mirror the layout of the stars and the movement of the planetary bodies. And the aim of the Bulgaria Pyramid Project is to recognize these patterns in order to decipher the message. Together, we can hear the melody if we are ready to listen. What does the location of the pyramids of Bulgaria tell us about the time when they were built? The ability to plan the layout of so many megalithic sites on such a huge scale, over hundreds of kilometers of mountain terrain, is a feat that would be difficult to achieve even today. And why would we want to even initiate such a gargantuan enterprise anyway? The intention nowadays just does not exist. It is inconceivable. The pyramids of Bulgaria, by their location, tell us that they do not fit into any standard historical chronology. No previous recorded civilization could have, would have wanted to build such a network of megalithic sites. These sites were built long before our history began. They belong to an epoch for which there are no written historical records. The capacity to fathom the heavens above and distinguish stars' patterns, constellations and planetary movements, let alone reproduce them on Earth, tells us that the builders of the Bulgarian pyramid had faculties that were lost in later historical times. 
Looking back beyond our limited historical perspective, we know from folklore that there was a time when humanity was different and could communicate easily with the heavens above. The biblical stories tell us how the prophets spoke to God. And the tale of Noah and his ark tells us how he saved two of each species, but he left out one, the unicorn, the horse with an antenna on its head, the only species that was connected to the heavens above. Searching through esoteric knowledge, we know that there was a time when humans were still closely connected to their cosmic origins. They could hear the planetary symphony and in the network of pyramids in Bulgaria, we hear how they mirrored the layout of the stars and the movement of the planets. The location of the numerous megalithic sites of Bulgaria tells us that we are hearing a far distant epoch of humanity when building such massive structures was possible and willed. All the megalithic sites in Bulgaria are built on higher ground above 200 meters elevation and most often 3 to 400 meters above sea level. By comparison, the Danube and Thracian plains, where no megalithic sites are found, lay between 50 and 100 meters altitude. It is as if the pyramids in Bulgaria were built at a time when the lower ground was not accessible underwater. The pyramids were probably built at a time when the lowlands were flooded. The builders probably lived in a water world where flood events like tidal waves and mega tsunamis were common occurrences. The rampart of Sopot tells us how it acted as a dike to break the waves incoming from the Danube plain in order to protect the megalithic sites further south. The erosion patterns around the pyramids tell us a similar story. Megalithic sites that are closest to the Black Sea Basin, such as those in the eastern Rhodopi, are much more eroded compared to those further inland in the Middle Mountain and north of the Central Balkan. At the Double Pyramid of Ostrets, the southeast corner, which faces the direction of the Black Sea, is more heavily eroded compared to the opposite northwest side. The erosion pattern reaches up to 900 meters altitude, which could imply that giant waves repeatedly smashed into this corner of the edifice, coming from east southeast. The Black Sea Basin has always been prone to flooding and overflowing. It is the recipient for many large river systems to the north and further east from the Caspian Sea. The Dniestr, Dnieper, Don, Volga and Ural rivers are all conduits for meltwaters from the ice caps that form further north when Earth's climate is colder. When the climate warms up, the ice caps melt. The water tunnels down the valleys associated with these rivers and pours into the Caspian and Black Sea basins that overflow and flood the Thracian and Danube plains. It is said that Noah's Ark is the story of the flooding of the Black Sea basin. But this massive flooding has never happened in recorded historical times. Geological research concludes that the Danube Plain has not been flooded since the time of the Paratethys Sea.
Could this be when the pyramids were built? By cross-dating when the Danube and Thracian plains were flooded and the time when the central Balkan and Rhodopi mountain ranges arose, we can try to pinpoint the epoch when the Bulgarian pyramids might have been built. According to geological research, the Paratethys Sea appeared 34 million years ago and lasted till 5 million years ago. At the same time, the Alpine orogeny, which gave birth to the mountain ranges in Bulgaria, started 23 million years ago and finished 6 million years ago. Around 5 to 6 million years ago, the Mediterranean dried up as earth cooled and water became concentrated around the poles. And so, we can cut down the potential period when the pyramids were built to 23 million years ago at the earliest and before 6 million years ago at the latest. This epoch coincides with the Miocene. In Bulgaria, the central Balkan mountain range is known as the Old Mountain, Stara Planina as opposed to the new mountain, which would be the Rila and Pirin mountain ranges. So during the Alpine orogeny that lasted 20 million years, mountains rose up and were later shifted and displaced by newer mountains that grew out of the ongoing tectonic plate movements provoked by Africa butting into Europe. We actually see this two-stage phenomenon in specific areas of the central Balkan, close to pyramidal formations like Yonkova Mogila. The mountain has been cut open to make way for the road, revealing regular layers of stone structures that uncannily remind us of the Roman building technique of stone, brick and mortar. It is in stark contrast with the randomness of the rock face found most commonly in the central Balkan. But these initial layers of construction have been deformed by later tectonic activity that seems to have pushed up the wall. Could it be that we are looking at the side of a pyramid on the old mountain that was disturbed by the push of the newer mountain? This would help us place the building of the Bulgarian pyramids to an early rather than a late period of the Miocene epoch, maybe around the Middle Miocene. At that time, during the Asturation Age, 16 to 12 million years ago, there was an abundance of new animal species. The later age saw a mass extinction event. Could it be that this period was also propitious for the development of the first epoch of humanity? Is this the Golden Age, the first time of humanity, the Zep Tepi of the ancient Egyptians, the biblical Garden of Eden that we have lost? By cross-referencing geological and paleontological sources with what we see on the ground, pyramid building in Bulgaria fits best in the period between 16 and 12 million years ago. The Great Pyramid of Giza is precisely aligned to true south. So, we can assume that it was built recently when Earth's position, tilt and orientation has not changed till now. By comparison, the alignment of the pyramids in Bulgaria is off exact cardinal alignments by a few degrees, usually between 5 and 20 degrees. This can be an indication that the Bulgarian pyramids were built at a different epoch from the Egyptian ones, when true south was in a different location. Earth's precessional tilt is around 23.5 degrees today. But there is evidence 
that it has varied between 20 and 25 degrees at different epochs. It explains Earth's hot and cold periods. During hotter periods, sea levels were higher. The alignments of the double pyramids in Bulgaria vary between 20 and 25 degrees. They do not match Earth's current precessional tilt. This can mean that they were built at an earlier epoch, far predating historical times. These misalignments also support the assertion that the pyramids were built at the time of the Paratethys Sea, when Earth's tilt was different and sea levels were much higher than today. What does the design of the pyramids tell us about the time when they were built? The art of the Bulgarian pyramid builders reveals how they perceived the world around them and the stage in the development of human consciousness that they belong to. The pyramidal shape of these megalithic sites, with the large base and the summit pointing towards the sky, tells us that the builders had an awareness of the heavens above. They were aiming for the sky. In Sopot and Ostrets, we find similar inclines to that of the Great Pyramid of Giza, 52 degrees, which is an expression of the golden ratio, the harmony of the cosmic order. And we find this same harmony in the angles of the lines of quartz blocks that are set in the granite stones. The pyramid builders had a special connection with the universe, like the unicorn with the antenna on its head. We will unravel this question further when we discover who were the pyramid builders in the next video. There is movement in the design of the double pyramids of Banya, Ostrets, Pazderite and Pesnopoi. They look like two waves moving towards the sun. The builders knew of the planetary dance. This intimate knowledge and sensitivity to the cosmic realm was unknown to later historical civilizations. These megaliths echo harmony of the universe that later fell silent as monuments became static when matter became denser. The Bulgarian pyramid builders, as we will see in the next video, had a level of consciousness that predates that of our epoch. They felt the rhythm of the cosmic order in a way that we have lost. Their art corroborates geological and paleontological research, pointing to an early epoch of humanity that might belong to the Middle Miocene between 16 and 12 million years ago. The stones of the Bulgarian pyramids talk to us by their size and shape. The size is particularly revealing. In Bulgaria, like other megalithic sites around the world, we know that the bigger the stones, the older they are. So, through a process of elimination, we can compare the stones of the megalithic sites to those of other historical civilizations that left their mark in the region. In this way, we can identify who did not build the pyramids of Bulgaria. And as a result, we should be left with the epoch when they might have been built. So, to do a quick rundown of Bulgarian building techniques, going back in time from newest and smallest, to biggest and oldest, we can eliminate the civilizations that did not build the pyramids. The communists didn't build the pyramids. The cement panel blocks they used 
maximize the ratio of weight to surface area covered in a way that is antithetical to the heavy stones of the pyramids. And it wasn't their predecessors either. The brick houses and low-rise buildings from 1930s to 50s do not fit in with the size of the stones found at the pyramids. The mud brick houses with wooden frames that were constructed from the 18th to the mid 20th century do not fit the bill either. The temples, churches and mosques that used the Roman technique of stone, brick and mortar between 50 AD and the 15th century are different too. The Thracian beehive tumulus tombs that we see in Cousin Luck 400 BC, as well as the contemporary Greek and later Roman walls made from large stone blocks are different in size and purpose. The stone walls uncovered at Duran Kulak that are estimated to date back between 6000 and 8000 BP are small and shabby compared to the huge megalithic edifices we know. In general, the Neolithic cultures of Bulgaria, like the Varna and Karanovo cultures, are not a match. The stone columns of Slanchevo date back to this period maybe. We have a separate video on Slanchevo. They do not match the megalithic sites we know either. And the Neanderthals, who roamed Europe from as early as 400,000 years ago, were not stonemasons. They, like the Denisovans, were nomads who lived in caves and were too few in number to build such huge edifices. So, the size of the stones tells us that the megalithic sites do not fit into the chronology of architectural techniques going back at least 400,000 years. The megalithic sites of Bulgaria belong to an earlier epoch. Not only did the Bulgarian pyramid builders have different techniques than the Greek, Romans and Thracians, the stone structures had a different purpose. The Greeks and Romans built agoras and forums to facilitate trade and administer people in cities. They built palaces and mansions for the rich and powerful and shoddy dwellings for the less fortunate. The archaeological record tells us about Roman societal organization. Looking back even further in time to ancient Egypt, Archaeologists have unearthed the dwellings of the workers at the pyramids. In Bulgaria, there are no traces of the cities where the pyramid workers lived, no palaces for the decision makers, no areas for trade and administration. We should find sprawling colonies of living quarters to account for the construction of the large number of megalithic sites and their huge size. Ostret is five times bigger than the Giza pyramid, but we don't. There are no traces of any human inhabitation and no communal spaces like in Duran Kulak, 6000 BC, or leftovers from any human presence for that matter. The Bulgarian pyramid builders lived in a different way from all known historical civilizations. They built with a different intention. This points clearly to an early epoch of humanity. In Gebekli Tepe in neighboring Turkey, we see representations of animals carved on stone pillars. There is nothing equivalent at megalithic sites in Bulgaria. And there is no rock art like at Lascaux in France, dating back around 20,000 BP. The physical representation of people and animals reflects a certain stage in the evolution of human consciousness. 
it means that the artist has a self-awareness and a detachment from his environment. He represents what he sees as something external to himself. The builders of Rosovets, Striama and Banya had not reached that stage yet. Their art tells us their story, one of a lack of conceptual thinking. As such, it does not fit into the standard chronology and therefore precedes any archaeological findings dating back at least 20,000 BP, based on current dating methods. And we cannot theorize that the Bulgarian pyramid builders lived in an isolated environment that was chronologically concurrent to any known civilization. Bulgaria is at the crossroads of Europe and Asia. It neighbors Turkey and has relatively easy access to the Mediterranean, Middle East and Central Asia. For example, Rozovets is only 1,500 kilometers away from Gebekli Tepe and 1,800 kilometers from Egypt. Bulgaria shares in the common Mediterranean geographical region its culture and history. We can conclude that the builders of the Bulgarian pyramids were different from those of Giza, Stonehenge and Gebekli Tepe. They lived at different epochs. Finally, coming back to the size of the stones, if we push the logic of bigger is older, then the earth would be the first super-megalithic construction, and this concept is in line with esoteric knowledge. The stones of the megalithic sites of Bulgaria have a rounded shape, as opposed to the rectilinear blocks that form the Egyptian pyramids and Stonehenge. The builders of Giza and Stonehenge broke and chiseled the stone to fit into an artificial structure. By comparison, the stones of Rosovets are molded like clay on a potter's wheel. At many sites, we can distinguish three epochs of megalith building the first two of which are similar to the classification of the Age of Stones at Machu Picchu in Peru. The older stones that are akin to the Hanan Pacha period look like molten granite, as if the stone had been liquefied before solidifying. The next epoch relates to the Urun Pacha period that is best known as the Walls of Cusco. It has its equivalent in the standing stones. They look like they were moulded, as if the consistency of the stone was already firmer, but could still be shaped like putty. The Egyptian pyramids, built with rectilinear stone blocks, are dated to anywhere between 4,000 and 10,000 BP depending on your allegiances. Gobekli Tepe around 12,000 BP and Stonehenge around 5,000 BP. Then the first two epochs of megalith building in Peru, like in Bulgaria, would predate all these sites. In the Inca tradition, the different periods of megalith building refer not only to a technique, but also to Earth's orbit around the Sun. The Hanan Pacha period represents a time when Earth revolved around the Sun every 220 days. During the Urun Pacha period, Earth orbited around the Sun in 260 days. Finally, during the third and most recent period, Ukun Pacha, Earth has the same orbit as now, 365 days. The proximity to the Sun with an orbit of 220 and 260 days would have had an impact on heat and gravity, as well as air density and the thickness of water. 
Maybe the granite stone at the time was more malleable. It could be shaped and positioned easily in larger volumes. In the videos on who built the pyramids and why they were built, we will draw parallels between the Inca tradition, Rudolf Steiner's account of the Akasha Chronicle, and what the stones in Bulgaria are telling us. If we take into account the Inca tradition, we can imagine that Earth's orbit would have had an impact on mankind and its perception of the universe. When Earth was so close to the Sun, man could only stare at it, blinded by its strength and proximity. This early epoch would have been one of the preeminence of the Sun in relation to the other planets. And this could explain why the stones always face south. We see at all the megalithic sites in Bulgaria that the stones are always turned towards the sun. From the larger scale of the pyramid to that of the individual stones, they have been positioned to point south. Most of the pyramids face south or are aligned south southeast the lines of stones and stone formations are always on the south side of a pyramid the north side is usually bare and at the smallest scale of the individual stones they are positioned to face the sun even if the incline they stand on is not south facing the stones will be turned southwards we see that many of the stones are shaped with a flat back facing north and a bulge facing south like a sunflower. And the stones at the Bulgarian pyramids are inclined away from the sun at around 20 degrees off a north-south axis, which reminds us of Earth's processional tilt as if they were paying tribute to the sun. By comparison, the Romans lined up their streets to Earth's cardinal points to serve earthly needs, trade and administration. And the ancient Egyptians built the Great Pyramid of Giza based on Earth's measurements and set to align perfectly with Earth's cardinal points. It is a sign that however old the pyramids of Giza, they were built during our epoch. The shape and alignment of the stones tells us that they were made during an early time in Earth's development, when maybe Earth danced closer to the sun, as remembered in the Inca traditions of Peru. The Bulgarian pyramid builders had a different technique for shaping stones than any other later civilization for which we have historical records. At several sites, we find granite stone that is molded like pressed glass. The suture marks are like the ones found on a glass bottle. We also find what has been termed in Egyptology drill holes. But these holes might not have been drilled into the stone after they were made. They might be skewer holes. The soft granite stone would have been molded around a skewer-like rod, just like a glassmaker holds the soft glass paste over the fire to shape it before it cools down. The shape of stones at megalithic sites in Bulgaria is specific. Stones, large and small, have a similar triangular shape. There are two variants, the regular triangle pointing up like a pyramid and the rhombus that looks like two triangles attached at the base. In many cases, the bottom left side of the stones on the east side is molded at a sharp angle to form a tip 
that is pointed into the ground. The angle reminds us of Earth's tilt and or the angle of the winter triangle formed by the star system Sirius, Betelgeuse of the Orion constellation and Procyon. The rhomboid contains the golden ratio, universal harmony that is found in all things. It is as if the Bulgarian pyramid builders knew how to capture cosmic harmony and set it in stone. None of these stones are made from a single mould. There is no industrial process here. Each one is made individually and has its own size, but obeys the same canon. And the stones are often laid out by three, which reminds us of the moon. And they face south towards the sun. What we are witnessing is the harmony of the cosmos etched into Earth's crust like a tattoo. The stones hold a message that reminds us of our cosmic origins. And this message is different from that carved into the megaliths of Giza, Stonehenge and Gebekli Tepe. It is the expression of an earlier epoch of humanity. The Bulgarian pyramid builders had a depth of knowledge about the universe and its workings that later civilizations had already started to lose. At most Bulgarian megalithic sites, we find quartz both in the cement mix that makes up the stone, as well as blocks of quartz that are inlaid in the granite in parallel lines like a stone sandwich. Quartz is a key element to understand the purpose of the pyramids. The energetic function of quartz gives the pyramids their capacity to transfer energy. Horizontally, they distribute energy like a network across a large area. Vertically, the pyramidal formations act as nodes in a network. They channel energy between Earth's core and the universe. Quartz plays a fundamental role at all levels of the megalithic network in Bulgaria. At the micro level, quartz is in the cement mix that forms the granite. Blocks of quartz are inlaid in the stones and quartz lines form a grid underlying megalithic sites to energize them. The alignments of clusters of megalithic formations span several kilometers to distribute energy on a bigger scale. And on an even larger scale, we see latitudinal bands of megalithic sites across hundreds of kilometers. Quartz in the granite energizes the entire network from the smallest stone at the micro level to the macro level of mountain ranges that span the whole of Bulgaria. So what does the composition of the stones tell us about the time when they were made? No historical civilization has ever used quartz in this way to energize edifices that distribute energy across such large distances. Even today, we wouldn't know how to use it in such a way. The closest comparison within our realm of current knowledge is the Temple of Heliopolis, the City of the Sun in ancient Egypt, where obelisks formed an energetic grid. The obelisks that we find today in major cities around the world are the legacy of this ancient knowledge of energizing earth 
and connecting to the universe that has been lost. Rudolf Steiner refers to Goethe listening to the granite rock in the Alps and hearing the vibrations of Earth's core. They echo the planetary symphony that gave birth to our rock. And indeed, it is the quartz that enables communication with the spheres. It is the instrument that helps us tune into the story of our cosmic origins, if we are ready to listen. The composition of the stones at megalithic sites across Bulgaria tells us that we are witnessing the existence of an early civilization dating back to a distant golden age, a first time when we sang in harmony with our planet and its sisters, dancing all together around the sun. We initially set out to answer the question, when were the Bulgarian pyramids built? We listened to their location and position, as well as the shape and composition of the stones. The location told us that the megalithic sites form a network. Each site is like the node in the grid, and we concluded that there was no recorded historical civilization that had the technology or the will to build so many and so huge megalithic sites. The position of the pyramids told us that they were built at a time when water levels were much higher and that their alignments point to an epoch when Earth had a different tilt and orientation than today, and possibly even a different orbit. The shape of the stones told us that they were built at a time when matter was less dense and more malleable. And the composition of the stones told us that the pyramids had a purpose to transfer energy between Earth and the cosmos, a technique unknown to us even today. We have tried to match the pyramids with all known civilizations that have inhabited the lands of Bulgaria from the communists to the Neanderthals, and none fit with what we see on the ground. We have compared the Bulgarian pyramids to other megalithic sites across the world that have been more researched, like the Giza pyramids, Stonehenge, Gebekli Tepe and Machu Picchu. The closest comparison are the Hanan and Uran Pacha periods in Machu Picchu, which happen to be the oldest period of megalith building in Peru. And we have sought answers in the realm of academic research in the fields of geology and paleontology. They point to the middle Miocene between 16 and 12 million years ago. The conclusion that stands out is that the Bulgarian pyramids were built at a far distant time before any known civilization for which we have historical records. At the time, Earth and humans were very different from today. In the next video, we will answer who built the pyramids. This will help us, in turn, to understand their intention and answer why they built the pyramids of Bulgaria.